Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another uh, Using Emacs video. Uh, this is actually a re-recording of a video I made earlier today. Um, unfortunately, I had some problems. Uh, it was really choppy and skippy, and so I have to redo it. So hopefully uh, this will uh, catch all the things that, that I wanted to in the last time around. Um, I just switched over to Manjaro Linux. Um, I'm using um, on my laptop Manjaro um, i3, and I'm liking that a lot, and I thought I would try to use Manjaro Cinnamon on my desktop, and um, yeah, I wasn't really sure why the um, why the choppiness was, ha was happening, so I tried to reinstall, I tried different packages, anyway, it turns out that there's a problem with the Intel driver for my um, onboard graphics, so by disabling that, I think that solved the problem, so I think we're good to go now. So, um, what I wanted to talk about today is Git, and um, not Migit. It. I do want to do a video on Megit, or at least other people have requested that I do a video on Megit, um, and that requires that I learn it a little bit better. I basically just use it for commits um, and some very basic stuff, but also there are some really good videos on Megit uh, already, so I don't feel there's a pressing need. So today I thought I would talk about a couple of other packages that I like a lot for Git. Um, one of them is Git Gutter, and the other is Git Time Machine. So what I've got over here is I've got a, um, an empty directory, you know, nothing is in here. So we're just going to do a git init here. Um, and what we'll do here is let's just, um, well, first let me show you my configuration. So, okay, just make it nice and big. And so git gutter. All right, so basically for git gutter, um, all you have to do is just uh, just use package, it's the normal, and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just uh, just those usual use gutter, uh, use package code, lines of code. And um, I also, here's how I installed Git Time Machine. Um, and what I did earlier today is I only use Git Gutter, or I usually only use Git Gutter for the visuals. Um, and I'll show you about that in a second, what I mean by that. Um, I don't use it for some of its other features, but I thought maybe I'd try to play with them a little bit, and so I I just did a quick search for Git Gutter Hydra, and I found this. Um, uh, I found this basically on Abo Abo's site, his the collection of Hydras. Excuse me, need a little drink here. And um, I just cut it over, and you'll notice here that it uses J, K, H, and L. You know those are like space max vim keys. So I'll probably change these key bindings at some point if I continue to use this, but I thought it would be fine for demonstration purposes. The other thing going on here is I bound this to um, to alt G, alt G just for the time being. Um, so let me just kill that buffer and let's edit temp Z and let's just edit a file demo and let's put line one, line Two, line three, line four. Let's let's just do a little macro line number. Do the insert. Okay, so good. So we've got our files here. We'll come over to here. We'll do our git status, and we'll do the git add demo and git commit am added status. Okay, so fine. So we've got our file in here. So here's where git gutter um, is really cool. So if I decide, let me change some lines here to three. Nothing happens now because this is just in a buffer and git talks about the changes on disk versus, you know, the changes on your file versus what you've committed. And if I save this, now it says, hey, those two lines have changed. And maybe I will, um, you know, insert some line here, insert another line here. Maybe we'll get rid of these lines, and then we will also insert more here. And let's also uh, say this is number at, yeah, right, eight. So we've got a bunch of changes here. We've got a deletion up here. We've got a change here. We've got some changes, or inserts, rather, whatever. These are the changes that we've made. and. They're all visually marked out for us, which is really nice. And so as we're editing our file, we say, oh, that's changed. So that's actually most of what I use Git gutter for. Um, and it's just kind of inobtrusive, and it's not in the way. And I can just see where my changes are. Um, but what it's also really cool for is if I t do bring up the Hydra, I can also, using the JNK here, or the HNL, 
um, I can go between the various hunks of code changes. So each of these is a unit, you know, is a hunk of changes that I made. And so I can look at them and I'll be like, well, um, let's go up here and, you know, this guy up here, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to keep that there. So let's revert this hunk. It can bring up the diff and bang, there it goes and it's reverted it back. The other thing is you can also over here, you can pop up hunk. This actually brings up the, just the diff to inspect. But let's say we want to bring this up. It's like, okay, well, I want to make these changes, the two and three changes, but not the other ones. So what we're going to do is we're just going to stage this hunk. And that's done. Well, no changes need to be saved, so it didn't actually do anything when I saved it. But here, if I do git status, um, we now actually have some staged commits here, that hunk that we had staged, but the other one's not. So if I git commit and just give the message, I don't do dash A because I don't want to commit everything. I just want to commit that, that hunk, um, you know, just uh, committing one hunk. And here, only these other ones are left, and so I can come in here and I can, you know, I can, if I wanted to, I, I could stage each of these if I wanted to. Well, why don't I just commit them? I'll just do all of them, you know, changes, whatever. This is just a demo. Uh, so now, uh, let's make some more changes here. One, two, three. Now notice that I've saved that, and these are changed, but the other ones, the other markers went away. Let's, uh, I'm just going to commit all of these, get rid of a bunch of lines, uh, commit all of these. I know I'm not changing the messages, but again, that's not the point there. Use our macro again to do a few more. And we'll come back up here to get rid of a couple. And there we go. Okay, so basically, and if I want, I can revert the buffer now that I've saved it just to get rid of that highlight. So that's Git Gutter. It's really cool. I like it a lot. Um, it just, just stays out of the way and just gives you some good information. Uh, but the other cool one that I like is Git Time Machine. And Git Time Machine, um, I've mentioned it in another video. I don't remember if it was an Emacs video or a workflow video or something. And I use it, um, usually I use it when looking at students projects and uh, I just use it like this uh, get time machine um, so it's actually get time machine here and what I can do is I can go previous P or N to go previous and next and just go between all my commits and so it's a really nice way of very simply and very easily just kind of seeing what's going on over the history of a certain file that you're storing in Git. So that's Git Time Machine. Um, I really only use it for my, you know, for looking at student projects, um, just because my workflow hasn't required it too much. But it's very cool and Git Gutter, which I like very much as well. So um, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it, and um, I hope the previous chop one didn't catch too many viewers um, and I hope this one is a little bit better okay so I'll see you next time